the ultimate battle between the greatest warriors in all the world. Time is running out. On the table, look at the wall. Time to move the dragon ball. Gotta hear the call. Imagine dragon ball. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. How's it going there, Zen? It's going. It's going? So, uh, while I was doing research for today's episode, which we will be entering, we are leaving the Grand Tour and entering into a mystical adventure, I started looking up a lot of the original English OPs for the original Dragon Ball. Do you remember any of them? Uh, um, I do. I couldn't name them like oh shit it's dragon ball yeah uh the the one i remember in my head is of course the english version of the uh the classic theme it's that one but there was one apparently before that one that was i think done by the ocean dub people everyone's favorite uh leave that child alone (laughs) people in which the theme song made child alone yeah legendary uh the there's like an 80s theme song where it's just like someone, it's the one that goes, you gotta go find them dragon balls, you gotta catch them all, those seven mystic balls. It is uh, amazing, because it's cut literally like an old 80s TV show. <laughs> they still had not figured out how to uh, sell anime oh, man, over here. that's the, the English one. The um, I, I had it in my head and then I lost it. You know which one I'm talking about then. It's the one, it, like, when I saw it, I was like, what the fuck is this? And then I was like, no, I think I kind of remember this, but it's just, like, so... Well, it's like, gotta f- find those Dragon Balls. Yeah, you gotta find them. Dragon Balls! That's the one! Yes! You gotta find them all, the seven missed balls. Dragon Ball! It's that one. It's so... got, like, that 80s music, like, dun, 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 in the yeah. background. Yeah, it's the one. And then it's all footage from the first Dragon Ball movie, which it reminded me of Rock the Dragon, which Rock the Dragon was mostly footage of the movies and then randomly Nappa destroying a jet plane. It was like, uh... Nappa killing the army was like to the riff of the song. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. Uh, <laughs> but you notice it real loud, it was like, Oh, you guys used the movie footage because it looked the best. You knew for a fact the anime was not always going to look this way. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, they sure did do that. It was like a lot of Tree of Might stuff. Yeah, it was Tree of Might, Dead Zone, and uh, Earth's Strongest. Because that's where the flip comes from. Where the classic Goku flip. Where he's flipping around. Yes, exactly. Everyone's favorite. Uh memory of Goku slipping because it, it literally always played at the beginning of Rocket Dragon and then randomly at the end it had Super Saiyan Vegeta and Super Saiyan Trunks spoiling the fact that there's gonna later be uh, both characters in there that Vegeta's gonna join them they didn't even have Super Saiyans by that point I don't think no that was the crazy thing about watching Rocket Dragon yeah is that I knew about Trunks before Trunks showed up so I knew who he was I just didn't know what the fuck he did so weird so weird growing up with Dragon Ball back in the day. Well, good conversation to begin with here, so let's go into <laughs> the units. I figured if we get all of our uh, talking points now, it'll help us focus for the two units we're going to be putting up on the big boy scale. It will be obviously, oh. if anyone has been paying attention to Dokkan, it should be very obvious who they are, but just to give a, a glimpse of what they are, they are the new... Dokkan Festival, Kid Goku, and LR Aureli. We are saving the other two units on the banner for another day. You know, we gotta we gotta eat the meal nice and slow because you never know if Dokkan will ever release another <laughs> Dragon Ball themed event. Yes. So let's start. Uh, it took them four fucking years. Four fucking years and a long ass time. So let's start with uh, Goku, who's this is all trans. I actually went into. Uh, the wiki where they have some form of translation for him and it's not uh because i did not want to you know disrespect kid goku with 
Google Translate, so I figured that at least there should be some form of translation <laughs> for him. Probably a good call. Yes. So his uh, his title is Decisive Punch Goku Youth, or just Kid Goku as I would call him. His leader skill is the Dragon Ball uh, Saga Category 3 Key, HP Attack and Defense 170%, and then... Or he gives it to boys and girls category, which is key plus three HP attack and defense one hundred fifty percent. His super attack is boys and girls like little kids. Yeah, so this is I don't. Uh, there's been a lot of debate over what this category should be called because some people have been calling it juvenile delinquents. Other people have called it young boy and girl. Uh, other people call it young warrior. It's no real. No, because because it's Google Translate and it is what it is. It's basically just uh, well, it doesn't make it. Then we we'll say it again. Child delinquent man is in it. Well, it's hard because like not a lot of the kids because kid Gohan's in there and he's not a delinquent, so it doesn't really make sense. But either way, it's a category. Goten is a delinquent and he's in here. Yeah, so it's basically just boys and girls. It is boys and girls from. <laughs> It has oob, but only the crappy SRZ oobs. Yep. None of the GT ones. Yeah, which is unfortunate because I think he could have used another category for the LR for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's boys and girls, and that was the one where people were like, "I don't." Depending on the phrasing on this, this is going to be very bad to look at. But that's the new category. Um, his uh, super attack is immense damage with a medium chance to stun. And his passive skill is attack and defense 77% at the start of the turn, and then he raises his attack by 59% the more HP remaining, the greater the attack boost. And defense up by 59%, the less HP remaining, the greater the defense boost. And then every single turn, key plus 1 and attack and defense plus 10% up to 59% at the start of each turn. And when he's, um, he performs a critical hit when HP is 59% or below once only so if you get him down to 59 percent, he will automatically crit and then he also when he hit it enters below 59 percent, he gets his uh active skill which is cause ultimate damage to the which is penetrate cause ultimate damage to the enemy can be activated when the hp is 59 percent or below uh his link skills are kamiamiha guidance of the dragon balls all in the family the innocence the incredible adventure turtle school fierce battle and his categories are low class warrior, pure Saiyans, Goku's lineage, Dragon Ball, uh, Seekers of the Dragon Ball, boys and girls in childhood. Uh, I mean, Dragon the, the Dragon Ball uh, saga, and whew, that is Kid Goku. And for you, those of you who don't know his art, his art when he is a terror is the um, the, Oz- the the Ozaru punch. Or actually, I've completely forgotten how to pronounce this, this damn ape's name because you now make me self conscious with every single damn name. <laughs> is it Ozaru or Ozaru? I I don't, actually don't know. Okay, let's go with Ozaru. I think, I think it's Ozaru, but I'm not 100 sure. Because it's like two O's in there, so I don't know Ozaru. It could it could easily be Ozaru. I, I genuinely don't know on that one. It's the big ape punch. If I learn it and you're doing it wrong, though. Yeah. If you watch Dragon Ball, it's the punch he does right before he literally punches the shit out of Demon King Piccolo. Everyone knows it. Yes. It's the punch. You know the punch. Yeah. And then if it's, you don't know the punch, what the fuck are you doing? Then there's something wrong with you. Also, his super tech is the bending Kamehameha. I I described what it did, but not what it was. So yeah, this is Kid Goku. After four years, this is the Dokkan Festival. You know, we got uh, Zen as someone who I want to get your reaction, which was your immediate reaction the second. Like, I can't stress enough how much this was a fucking surprise. People thought that we were getting keys. Like We got actually cool shit, finally. Yeah, like, it was crazy because I saw it, and I think the, the first person I saw... I'm just going to credit him as the first person I saw that said, like, yo, this is a Dokkan Fest, was uh, Truth. He was the first person to say, this is a Dokkan Fest. Every, all the data miners said, this is not a Dokkan Festival. But he looked at it, he saw that it was Corrin and the Great Ape, and he was like, no, this is a Dokkan Festival. This is literally how they've done every single Dokkan Festival. And everyone else was like, no, it's it's something related to the keys. It has to be key-related. Because 
literally four years in and being stuck into the Dragon Ball uh, World Tournament ghetto, everyone thought that there was no chance we would ever get a featured Dragon Ball unit that was not like Ape Kid Goku, which is the only Dragon Ball unit we really had in the banner, not counting like uh, Bulma because she's also has Dragon Ball. But there's not a lot. Like on the before this event, there was exactly one unit from Dragon Ball that had Fierce Battle, and it was Aureli. <laughs> All right, time for an ill-fated the Kid Goku banner while you talk about him. Mm-hmm. Are you actually trying for it as like, we speak? The login gifts, and I got just enough. Oh, he only went Super Saiyan 2. This is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, uh, that's also been my experience. Actually, my experience has been very positive. I got every single Dokkan Festival but fucking Kid Goku. Fuck, I got... Boo! My first card was a fake out, and it was fucking boo. Oh, okay. So that that you so you got the same experience I got, which I got. And boo. I just got physical Super Saiyan three Go Tanks. God, God damn it! So yeah, you're exactly having my exact situation, which is physical Spirit Bomb Goku. Go fuck yourself, Dokkan. Yep, that sounds about right. I'm glad you saved that. You were gonna try and pull a rhyme and see if you could pull the yeah, feature. And I got the strength, uh, Super Saiyan two Vegeta. That was my guarantee. Go fuck yourself, Dokkan. You're the only game where I can pull full four SSRs in a multi and be like, fuck everything. Yep, and ah. that's that's been my experience trying to go for this guy because uh, we're not really talking about, it, but he is actually insanely good. This is actually better (laughs) he is real good and also that key plus one thing never stops he just constantly gets key plus one until until literally he's a self-sufficient key machine and you don't even need key links at that point all you need is his dragon balls and for those who have not seen the animation his active skill literally plays the fucking end punch but now you can do it to everyone <laughs> you can do it to everyone good it's really good and they have a giant hole in their goddamn chest they show the hole in the chest why is it so good why did it take four years <laughs> to get this kid goku it's almost good though that it took this long because now he's really if we had gotten him sooner he would have looked like shit yes i actually 100 percent agree with it where it's the monkey's paw wish where like now that they have to use active and I'll, i'll also say now he has the greatest active skill animation bar none the only one that by a mile by a mile next is b pan because the song she plays (laughs) <laughs> the song is amazing and then afterwards it's both of the super saiyan 4s with their long ass slow ass animations at the end <laughs> with their garbly ass fours suck now i hate them they're really good cards but man like goku's so much better and like ah he's so much cooler yeah he's so much cooler and better and uh his animation flows really like the problem with the super saiyan 4s is that eventually you get tired of seeing their active skill but because his active skill is based on being below 59 percent and uh also it's just so goddamn gorgeous and he literally punches the shit through everyone you never get tired of seeing it where i feel like with the super why is his animation the only one that doesn't look like a janky flash game from like 1996 i think so this is one of the things that i've seen people kind of uh talk about is that since Dokkan literally has never done something like this, they really needed to hit it out of the park to prove that people want this kind of thing. And thankfully, it it did show that people wanted it. We did reach number one for this specific banner, uh, which is good. They should know that more people want stuff like this. <laughs> like, we don't want the same thing over and over again. And I would like more representation from Dragon Ball specifically. Because it really there really wasn't any... Like, the World Tournament was it. Like, up until this point, the best uh, Dragon Ball card ter- in terms of animations was the LR Yamcha. And technically speaking, his um, his essay is just the same thing, except for at the end, he does slightly more. Uh, there's slightly more to it, and that's it. But yeah, I really... I'm so mad about that fucking boo. Yeah. I'm kind of mad about my boo. I have a dupe boo, by the way. I pulled two fucking boos. The sad part is, um, I really like the transforming units, so it's really cool that he's like the category leader for them. Yes. 
but, but also, also fuck him. Also, Kid Goku, man, it is literally the man of the fucking hour. He's... I, I, I'm almost that everyone else even come close to how cool he is. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think we could say, and I'll say this even knowing that I have the love for L.R. Aureli, there's just that penetrate ability is just so goddamn cool. It is just, there's just like... I will... Huge... Dragon Ball guy. Like, like art of Dragon Ball. But I'm not a kind of... Oh, everything sucks after the original Dragon Ball. Blah, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the coolest character in the game. Yeah. It's... And I really do feel like a lot of people have forgotten over time just because they've never seen it, but the end of the Demon King Piccolo arc is maybe the best send-off to a villain that they've done, where it was the most... Like, like if you think about it, like I think the only other one that comes close in terms for people's minds is the end of the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan versus Cell stuff. But in my mind, in terms of like pure, this guy's fighting this guy, there's no real outside interference. Goku just really, really, really badly wants to win because literally this guy has killed so many of his friends. He's killed the dragon as well. He's killed Shenron at this point. And as far as anyone else is known, we know now in the uh, aftermath that, you know, they're going to come back because, <laughs> you know, Dragon Balls, Dra- Dragon Ball, the Dragon Balls will come back. But at that point, when he finally, like, takes him down and he literally penetrates him and he goes through his fucking stomach. I don't, and know, they... if, I don't know if that, that's the wording I would use. That's the wording I'm fucking using. Kid Goku penetrates Demon King Piccolo at the end and then he gives and birth. He literally penetrates him. And then he gives birth to a child and he shoots his child out into the wilderness. That is actually what happens. He he literally, as he's dying, decides he needs to make a son because he's so completely fucked because he can't recover from a hole in his chest. But yeah, it's it's so unbelievably cool. And then his category is also in terms of a unit, he's great. And then for somehow somehow they figured out a way to make his category not bad because they've included boys and girls. Uh, I think the Dragon Ball Saga will be one that hopefully they update more, but right now their only support is really, like, Kami, and it's LR Yamcha in the new LR Aureli, so they need more, and I really hope this means that there's gonna be more, but we're gonna have to wait and see what that up, what's up with that, but... Yeah, I, I am not optimistic enough about Dokkan to assume they're not gonna immediately start just going back to, oh shit, it's Super Saiyan XX whatever Goku. Yeah, one hundred percent possible that's gonna happen. But for this one, for one brief moment, my Dokkan love from literally when I started came back, and it literally was all one unit release. Like even if I don't have him, the fact that he's he exists, and one day I might get him because now that there's fucking like finally the coins have a purpose. Finally, there was a unit where I'm like. Uh, when the coins were introduced, I was like, there's no fucking way they would ever get me to pull that much to get coins. And then they released Kid Goku. So guess who has almost enough coins? <laughs> yeah, this is the first time in two years Dokkan and been like, oh my god, this is... Yeah. This it's been is... a long time, man. And we're speaking for ourselves, and this is... It's been a long time. It is a since fucking time since Aureli for me. Nothing has ever peaked. This has now reached peak levels. <laughs> this has gone beyond what peak I thought. Peak Dokkan hype. Yes, this is literally peak Dokkan hype for us. This is like it was uncontained, dude. I could not fucking sleep. I literally couldn't sleep <laughs> because Kid Goku was around the corner. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, that's cool. Well, cool, they're gonna really in Kid Goku, whatever. And then I saw that data dump on Twitter, and I actually like got hype. Yeah. Hype at a Dokkan data dump since like. Of just an extremely long time, and it really is. I think that day will go down as maybe, at least for me, easily one of the best days in terms of Dokkan. 
It is the day the big boy scale got the biggest boys dropped on it, and literally one the, of them. The fattest boys are here. The literally the fattest boys, like the absolute size of these units that we're putting on the scale, is tremendous. <laughs> Breaks the scale, as far as I'm concerned. And with that, I think it's finally time to just put a number on this Kid Goku. Otherwise, we'll just talk about Kid Goku nonstop. How, how much are we respecting the rules of our own scale? <laughs> I would say around the same level that Defu gave when we gave him Macrillin. <laughs> so okay, 20. 20. That's 20, what I'm giving him. 20. 20 is for the same here. And also, we're just going to add him, so now he gets a 40 out of 5 on the big boy scale. <laughs> 40 out of 5 on the big boy scale. Is this goddamn Goku? Yes, and it's absolutely learned. And literally, Dokkan, if you just did this more like this, it would be so. And fix some of the other issues and fix the banner, you would almost be my perfect game in terms of gotchas. Uh, until you fix that banner, though, I will not forget the fact that I fucking pulled so many units that would not get Goku or anything I wanted. So. Yeah, gotchas are kind of getting to that point, right? Where, like, starting to go. So I can never get what I want, so why the fuck am I playing? Yeah. Gotcha is getting there. Yeah, definitely getting there. And uh, to be fair with me and Dokkan, if it wasn't for the large break, I would be there sooner. So the fact that I did not have a Super Boo, um, a Super Boo at all kind of helped me go like, okay, I don't have him. And I didn't have Rainbow for Super, uh, Super Vegito or... Um, the physical go tanks. The physical go tank sucks because the tech one's about to be released, and there's about a the easy A, yeah, yeah. And so pulling him made me shit go like, on. yeah, there's such a good chance for him to get absolutely shit on with the passive, and then also the tech one might. Be, I'm really thinking that he's going to be the leader for boys and girls, and then very possible. And then I could have had a leader for my Rayleigh while I wait to pull Kid Goku, and it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole mess. Dokkan. So yeah. It's a fucking nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare. True. Now let's go into the other uh, big boy we're going to be adding. And this is LR Kid Goku and Aureli Narakami. Naramaki. My bad. Narakami is the name of you. Narakami. The the, the main character of Persona 4 or one of Killua's attacks in Hunter x Hunter, depending on which style of weeb you are. Yes. Now imagine if we had a show that had Aureli, Yunarakami, and Killua all as the main character. And they go to that show. They go they're basically okay, so they're starting a detective agency, right? So they're going around solving crimes for mind other mind detective agency. Yes, the mind detect the Narakami and slash Narabaki uh detective agency. I would love it. I would fund it. All right, let's see. So he, uh, then then their title is Where Excitement Awaits. The leader skill is Dragon Ball Seeker's attack uh, defense and HP 77%, key plus three. Super attack is a super power dream and the super, spa- the super power special. The passive skill is Friendly Miracle, and it randomly changes key spears of a certain type to rainbow. And then the key plus two and attack 30 percent per rainbow key spear got and if they are in the first spot they take 30 percent uh damage reduction their link skills are the innocent in fighter incredible adventures guidance of the dragon balls penguin village shattering the limit and legendary power categories are dragon ball seekers joint forces movie heroes boys and girls childhood saga and the art is the art from the third movie so you even get a mercenary tau in the background, just kind of looking on <laughs> menacingly. Just in there, being an ass. Yeah. It's really unfortunate that he did not get a Dokkan in Mystical Adventure, because I feel like that unit would have been very good to power up with them, because not a lot of units have Penguin Village that can go into the category of Dragon Ball Seekers, because they're all SSRs, or they are the shitty um, Kid Goku that is str and requires to be in the first attack to the first spot to do anything yeah so that's another hope for me in the future where i hope they add more penguin village dudes but uh again it's only because i'm so happy with dokkan that i have some form of hope that i should not get that hope up though (laughs) very small hope for that to happen take it easy (laughs) yeah don't get overexcited on me now because you're gonna really hurt yourself it's true it is true 
So, uh, and their, their special attack is pretty great because one of them is really literally picks up a rock and continues the tradition of units having better animation than the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan LR. <laughs> Every unit. Oh, it's so great. Every new you know, unit. It's all almost getting like sad because every time a new unit drops someone inevitably links that fucking gohan and his goddamn walk his shitty little walk cycle is he not even a walk cycle frozen he looks like he's taped to a popsicle stick and someone's moving it up and down yeah it's really bad (laughs) and then the the other one is the joint of using the nichal cannon and the kamehameha to just and also the gachans get to uh, attack as well so it's all fun in games as everyone gets blown to shit and then she does a little victory dance when you win and kid goku is just kind of very happy with himself he's just like yeah we blew that person up and killed him yeah team killer uh also because of the passive it, it's able so a lot of people are saying it now so now you just don't have to see me as a crazy person but they're now saying that this is the greatest um free-to-play lr and i think a lot of that comes down to the fact that um a lot of free-to-play lrs get fucked over by not having a passive um that gives attack percentage so for example yeah. Yeah, they all get that stupid flat yeah which was honestly was kind of my fear going in for this card, which I thought for some reason they would at the last second um, change it to a flat passive, but making it be related to key to rainbow spears and it kind of helps like so it it's wildly fluctuating fluctuating the attack, but usually you can get a good amount of maybe three, so you get ninety percent from uh the passive most of the time which is pretty good for a free to play lr for a unit that Uh, is uh again completely free a pain in the ass to grind but not on the level of like 777 like if you're complaining about this grind and then also did the other grind i don't i can't stand with you on this one like literally (laughs) check yourself people check yourself i just did that fucking great Saiyan uh grind that shit was a nightmare this one is much better because it's one stage that is better mm-hmm. so what do you feel about this unit here zen what do you what are your thoughts you we as for those of you who have watched it the uh the episode of i uh, it was it this Unit literally dropped during the finale of Yu-Gi-Oh! The Sacred Cards, and we had to stop Yu-Gi-Oh! The Sacred Cards. And by stop... Fucked over the Sacred Cards. Yeah, a little bit, but also I think it made it better, because now people could literally see my my live reaction to the special attack. Which I feel like, oh, you know, that's pretty good. Also, Yu-Gi was really a bad um, duelist, so we needed... Yeah, Yu-Gi sucks all of a sudden. Apparently... the... the, The big not the way to go oh yeah big shield garden in attack mode never do that uh, then you attack with it uh, <laughs> i mean i will give uh, uh the yugi's performance at the end of the sacred cards a one out of five big boys for that yeah it's... absolutely only because and the the one instead of a zero is only because he had the balls to actually do that yeah and then he also had no other monsters he could play <laughs> at all he didn't play any other monsters for the rest of the duel it was pretty great seating maybe he bricked and he was like fuck this oh yeah so he was like one of those dudes in like a legends pvp whose unit like their plan failed so they were gonna just gonna forfeit they're like yeah, they oh. just stand still and let you kill them yeah i you know i lost my broly so may as well just have these dudes sit here and take all the damage here as well just fucking stop playing exactly lost my broly it's all over that was Yugi when Big Shield Gardener died. <laughs> <laughs> it's his Broly. Uh, so I like this unit a lot. I think the art's really good. Um, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 for the combined uh, uh, in Kamehameha. Yeah, it's, uh, it's delightful. Because I, it gives me like goku x vegeta vibe that they, they're always like, ah, let's always have their combined moves do like the Kamehameha, so it makes a final Kamehameha, except it's fucking Aureli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for this time it's Aureli, and also the Gachans even get thrown into the mix, which is hilarious, because they actually show her shocked face when they when the Gachans um, 
uh, shock the enemy, and she's like, whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> I can't believe yeah. that happened. It, because when, um, actually, like, when the fight's over, uh, animation is a better bouncing up and down than Gohan's walk. Yes. Oh, my God. That animation is so much better. And I'll also say, um, both uh when this when you ko with that animation it's great because they're happy and then you see the big ass ko and then with the kid goku when you um well, beat them with the penetrate and it says ko it's literally a crying kid goku as he's falling down <laughs> as you see the words ko <laughs> yeah like when, and he's like i did it everyone yeah and it really has Man, like it's a really great i <laughs> these dragon ball units yeah they're fantastic uh, special screens after they win really makes it feel like a fighting game. Like it in Injustice, when all the characters, when they would win, they would go off to somewhere else. And it'd be like, alright, here's your win screen. And for me, I'm gonna say this unit, uh, is basically a 15 out of 5, because it's amazing. Right, yeah. Considering who this is, that makes sense. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a lot to love in it. The only reason it did not get a 20 is because really the Penguin Village thing really hurts when there's no easy A for Aurelia at all out there. So, and she's not in Dragon Ball Seekers and the only other unit she's in is in the Dragon Ball Saga 1. <clears throat> but that requires having the kid Goku to have. I feel like, uh, almost that the leader skill should have been one to both. Like, it should have been 77% to both of those new ones, but I understand why not. I guess they're going to save that specific leader skill for another unit. <laughs> Maybe when we finally get a Kid Gohan uh, LR for his ape form or something. That's fair. Yeah. But yeah, 15. So when you combine that up, that gives it a 20. Just to, to do a quick summary of our two big boys, we have uh, Kid Goku coming in with a whopping 40 out of 5. <laughs> And then we have... He really got the job done, didn't he? <laughs> really got the job done. I really don't think... That if there is, is a unit that reaches his heights, I will be amazed. And then we have LR, Kid Goku, and Aureli, which sits at 20 out, uh, 20 out of 5. Respectable. Joining Krillin, who is technically a uh, 15 out of 5, and Gogeta and Chi-Chi, who are both 5 out of 5s. A really good correct. list of big boys. That's correct. You know, the funny thing is, is that until recently, I was going to say it's actually very hard to get a 5 out of 5 uh, big boy on the Dokkan list, unless you're either A, an amazing unit that's hard to ignore, or B, we really like you. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Which... Turns out they really, they, well, we'll see, it turns out that if you release units that aren't fucking fuzzy glam rockers, we will put them up pretty high. Oh, it's true. It's true. And to be fair, we always do mention that the units are good when they are good. <laughs> I feel like how good they are is not representative to how they place on the list. Uh, no. <laughs> but, you know, it's a it's a full package deal. It's true. Like, I'm gonna have to... Like, you can't play only for the meta, you know? You gotta also just have some fun. Exactly. It isn't good, though, because he's fucking crazy good. Yes, he is. See the previous episode for more of our thoughts about the big boy scale and our fun with Dokkan. But for now, <laughs> let's go on to questions. Uh, thank you, everyone, who sends us a question. We'll start with the YouTube questions. Uh, this one comes from MR. He says, great as always. You guys work well together. Quick question for the next episode. If you could remaster an old DBZ game, which would it be? For me, it would have to be Budokai Tenkaichi, Tenkaichi 3. And that's from MR. Thank you, MR. Um, so I'll start with this one so I can give you some more time. I would remaster the old... So there was a NES game. For the for Dragon Ball, they came out, and not a lot of people know that it came out in English because they changed the name and then also changed the way Kid Goku looked. So it was only Dragon Ball in name, and then instead of getting panties uh, to give to Master Roshi, you gave him a sandwich. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a very weird game, and I would love to have a remaster of that specific game because it was literally an action-adventure game, and I really would prefer for Dragon Ball specifically to keep up with the theme of Dragon Ball. I think it works better as an action adventure over a fighting game. I think later on Dra Dragon Ball makes more sense as a fighting game, but 
in terms of the beginning and action adventure works perfectly fine for me. So that's my answer. What do you feel, Zen? Uh, I I would probably do Budokai 2 again because that fucking board game thing. It's really fun for mm. me. Where you're a little chibi Goku just hopping around the board. Yeah, oh yeah. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, good idea. And I'll also... I'll... I still to this day claim that that is where Dokkan got its board game thing from. It really makes sense if you look at it long enough. I'll also say Tenkaichi 3 is also good to remake because I think Aurelia is also in that game. So we'd finally get... Not the mine. Uh, I forget which I one... I don't claim to be the Budokai Tenkaichi 3 expert, so maybe. I know she's in one of them for sure. Because uh, there's plenty... Every time I mention Aurelia, people go like, remember when she was in this fighting game? And I go, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh... Uh, thank you for the question. This next question comes from Appa. <clears throat> question for the next TBR. Where does the Dokkan story rate on the big boy scale? Story mode? Yeah. Um, so let's look at this objectively. At one point, you fight the Ginyu Force, and then you fight Bardock's team, and then you fight Frieza and the Ginyu Force, and then you fight Bardock's team with the Ginyu Force. And then I feel like you fight the Ginyu Force, the Bardock team, and Frieza all at the same time at one point. And then for some reason, Android 13 is there. It is probably the worst story in like a, any kind of these games. It's an absolute fucking mess. Yeah, and this also comes from us playing in Japan. So we don't even get the fun mistranslations that Global gets, where it's like some shitty translation came out and all of a sudden turtles is calling himself a law degree student like we don't get that so all we get is like why the fuck am i fighting the same people over and over and over again for like pretty much yeah and i I do like i did like when there was a brief moment where they introduced the filler villains from dragon ball and that was really weird. And I thought that was really cool. But then those dudes never became units. So that was another good example of like, why aren't Dragon Ball units ever <laughs> given any form of respect? We have literally three people with full on animations and they're not made units. Yeah. So I think that's a pretty easy zero out of five from both of us. Yeah. There's just like, yeah. there's, there's it not sucks. a lot. It's, it's terrible. It's yeah. unfun. It's boring. It's not like enjoyable to go through. And it sucks. Yeah. The best thing about it is you get stones. So pretty much no stones, no sale. Uh, okay. Thank you for the question. Let me see. Let me find, I believe there was one more question here. I will say there was a good amount of people also agreeing then like, yeah, the fun is cool. I remembered the old modcast days and when you guys got really dark and started ranting near the end. <laughs> It's like, yeah. When it got really dark. Yeah, it happened. Mm hmm. Definitely. Uh, okay, this is the last question from YouTube. This question is for the next TBR. If that green Omega comes out as a card from the EZA, what rating would you give the SA animation that you see in the EZA? Um, this is just pure, this is a pure just animation quality. So, um, have you seen the, the Omega's uh, SA from the uh, Omega event? I have not. Uh, I heard it's pretty cool, though. It is pretty cool. He throws up the John Cena, you can't see me, and then he does the Captain America, so you messed up pose. Is the you can't see me moving? Jonathan Joestar. Yes, it's similar to, it's it's a, it's like a good in-between of both, because he doesn't have the bravado of John Cena's you can't see me, but he also doesn't have the gentleman qualities of the Jonathan either, so it's like a more of a, a messed up one, and then he closes his fist. It's the Caesar. <laughs> Say it again. One more time. Uh, so it's the Caesar instead. It's funny. It's the Caesar it's one. Yes. Anger. Yes. It is all anger. anger. And then he closes his hand and then a giant tornado comes out and takes you. And it's pretty cool when you see it. <laughs> so. It does sound pretty fucking cool. <laughs> it, it is really cool. That shit. It's really cool. I would say out of all the essays I've seen, I'd say it's a solid four. If that I, I could see that as a really good twelve key super. 
it's it's fast enough that it doesn't take too much time. It's cool enough, and it looks really funny when he does the Captain America pose because <laughs> it does literally like a close in zoom in shot of the pose. <laughs> uh, what do you feel based off of my description alone? Uh, um, because he does the Caesar, I'll give him a three out of five. All right, that's fair. That's fair. And hate on the Caesar. No, you can't. You can't. Spoilers for Spoilers. <laughs> Parts just... All right, I'll have to bleep that out. So you're just gonna have to. Yeah. You're gonna have to just assume whatever I said at that point. Let me quickly look at what the timetable for that exact comment is. All right, thirty. Yeah, editing job. All I wanted to. Whatever your your voice cracking up already makes my editing job a pain in the ass. So what's a what's well, another? Then, uh, I'm gonna say. Ah, oh, damn it! Are you just gonna do that throughout the episode now to make my life worse? I progressively drop by the two. God damn it! I'm just gonna cut all of you. How about that? So that it's just me. <laughs> all right. Now let's go on to the uh, God, I fucking hate you so much. Hey, I don't do this on your fucking show. I don't do this on Legends <laughs> Roadwork. Actually, you know what? Next episode, prepare for just Only like... Only three episodes in. We don't have enough time. To... It's not a good sample size. Damn it. All right, fine. You're right. You're going to have to wait till the day that I... Actually, you know what? I did yesterday go like, all right, play the theme song. <laughs> so I yeah, do, in exactly. fact... <laughs> I do, in fact, do that. All right. Seriously, now, Twitter questions. Thank you, everyone. Remember, you can follow me for your Twitter questions. If you want to ask it via Twitter, it's usually pretty easy for me to look at them all because on YouTube it is slightly harder, but I do look at YouTube ones, but I occasionally miss them. Anyway, first question. This one comes from uh, Koki, hashtag Grooky Gang, and he asks, How do you, what do you think about... Okay. How do you think Dokkan history would have changed if Dokkan had a worldwide release like Legends did? Of course, you guys wouldn't have the name that inspired the name of your legendary podcast. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I don't know. We would we wouldn't get. Say it again. Because there's a lot of variable to that. Yeah. I think the I think the basic one would have been that um, we would never have gotten three hundred stones. I think if oh would, that is the biggest meme that we would lose. I yeah I really do think if they were being yeah. extra cautious, if they were being extra cautious, they would not have done that. To like I think Japan would have lost three hundred stones by the way of that because that would have been caught eventually by the fact that they would have to have done it again, but in English for its release. Right. Yeah, the worldwide it changes a lot. It changes a lot of like the player base community. There would be no reason to ever debate global versus Japan. There would be none of that. I honestly think that we would probably be like further back because I want to say like it would have taken a, a a year longer for Dokkan to release, or it would have been a slower release schedule just because um, it's harder to like plan to do it for that many countries at the same time, especially when right. it was released. You have to remember that exact point when it's released when not a lot of games did that. So I think there would have been a, a definitely a big change and there would have been also like a, re- a weirder release schedule for units. And I also think we would have never got an LR Super, uh, Super Saiyan Vegito, uh, Super Saiyan Blue Vegito because they would not have allowed Japan to uh, have a vote on what would be the next free-to-play LR. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because uh, that that true. that vote literally has exp- basically told everyone, "Hey, these are the LRs that are coming in the future." So get ready. I already have a pretty good idea that LR Roshi, Kid Goku, and Krillin is going to be the uh, LR for Dragon Ball. I feel like that's the reason why that it didn't come out earlier is because they were waiting for Kid Goku to come out. So now there's a reason to have Roshi. But yeah, I think those are the basic things of like you would think Dokkan would be a completely different game, and so would I think the attitudes of everyone. It would be different, and I think yeah, I think people would approach it differently. Yeah, 
and the 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 getting number one would probably be a big a bigger thing because it would have been worldwide and yeah again it's a very hard question to think about because there's a lot of things that would change i wonder if if getting number one would be harder um hmm I think so. I think it would be harder, but then also we would get less rewards from it. Like, I don't know exactly why, but I feel like that's what would end up happening. Because they would not... I just don't think that they would uh, go like, okay, we hit number one in Japan, in Android, and iOS, and also in Global, we also hit number one. So we're going to... I think they would literally wait till we were a number one in two of, of both of them at the same time. And then release... That. Yeah, that's what I think. <clears throat> In, for- but would there be a bo- both of them? Because in Legends, it's all basically it's just one server. Like you can play Japanese people on here. Oh yeah, you're right. So yeah, I think it'd just be across the board harder. But also, I think like there would be a lot of weird things with. Um... So another thing that would have happened, we would not have gotten a Rayleigh banner twice because Global only had a Rayleigh once. And that was because I want to say a lot of the times I think it's because of rights issues. Dr- the Dragon Ball Hero stuff would be harder to get. And um, yeah, just a lot of stuff, especially with crossovers. Yeah, that One Piece crossover probably would have never happened, or at least it would have been way harder. It would or it would have been way later to do as well. Because when Global did eventually get the One Piece um, event, they had to change the SR Goku to SSR because there was no reason to have an SR at that point. Right. Yeah. It's a real thinker. Thank you for the question. <laughs> Still think about it till this day. That was a very that was a deep question right there. That's Yeah. That was powerful. Yeah, definitely powerful. And now for an equally powerful question, we get from Chrono Trigger Remake, please. Uh now that Dragon Ball mm-hmm. has a Yeah, that's his name. Chrono Trigger Remake, please. Like it. Now that Dragon Ball has a Dokkan Fest unit, what's another underappreciated arc in Dokkan you want some love? Uh, I would like them to release a Super Saiyan 2 Gohan uh, Dokkan Fest event so he can finally have one and then he have the good walk animation. <laughs> you want him to go to what What would even be above LR? ZR? Yeah, he would be ZR. Uh, actually, he would start... It would be literally a transforming Gohan. So he would start as Super Saiyan Gohan and then the transformation would be Android eight, the uh, Android uh, 16's head would show up, and then the enemy would stomp it. So it would be random feet of enemies, and then Gohan would cry, and then you'd get uh, Super Saiyan two Gohan. <laughs> There's a lot of like essays I want that are literally just like it's similar to like the the fighters thing, where it's like I want a card that starts as Krillin, and then if after you take a super attack, it transforms into Super Saiyan Go- Goku. <laughs> That would be awesome. It would be awesome. And then his active skill would literally just be the uh, screaming, you fool. But this time he does it to everyone. (laughs) And for some reason, every person is now throwing a Destructo Disc at him, even though some of them wouldn't be able to. So, like, Bulma's doing it. And it makes no sense that he cuts Bulma in half. It's funny as shit. Yeah, stuff like that. So... It would definitely be Super Saiyan 2 Gohan or the specifically the Namek Saga Super Saiyan Goku for me. Because Namek, I feel I feel like 3-year really got shit on by 4-year. Because 3-year had the whole Namek thing, and then it ended up doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. Yeah, 3-year, I think, by comparison is... I think it's the 4-year is literally learning what went wrong in 3-year and actually doing right by it. And that also makes it really bad for, like, the Namek category, the Namek Saga category, which is kind of fucked at this point. Uh, but what what would your uh, response to this be? What Which which ones would you want to see some love given to? I know. Um, I want a proper Dokkan Festival versus Saiyan saga vegeta for a really fucking broken one yeah the uh, saiyan saga vegeta is another one where he has never gotten a dokkan festival and i feel like it's kind of them going like well why would you want one 
I think he's definitely and it's like why the fuck would we not? It doesn't have to be Golden Frieza, you know. I just want something that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Category uh, where it's like all the Gokus and Vegetas that fight each other. And it's a shame that I think they've already kind of used a lot of those units for uh, Super Saiyan Four Goku and Vegeta. <laughs> they've already done yeah, it. They really did. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Oh, oh, this is another one that I would like because I think it would be really funny. I would want to see a uh, back when he was called Ma Junior. I want to see a, a Ma Junior uh, Dokkan Festival where when he counters an SA, he does the reverse Mafuba. So when someone hits him, it would be so good. It'd be so good because they would go like you'd see the dodge face and then you'd see the giant like reverse Mafuba and then he would get stuck inside the Mafuba <laughs> and get stu- and stunned. That's great. I want that really bad. Yeah, I was thinking about that. See, again, when you go into the mind of like, oh, maybe they're going to start doing Dragon Ball dudes right. I was like, oh, they should do this. <laughs> they should totally do the Piccolo Jr. <laughs> That's another one. Good. Definitely. It'd be real good. Uh, thank you for the question. Next one comes from uh, Camden Filler ha- uh, with a B and then hashtag Sobble Squad. So he's playing both of us. Uh. I'm a- <laughs> Uh, and asks, if Aureli was a category leader for a new category, what would her category be? Um, I wish there was a way to put, like, a category that was just called fucking dumb. Uh, fucking busted. Yeah. Like, fu- like either fu- like fucking busted or something like that. Either characters who are extremely strong for some reason or characters that are extremely stupid for some reason. Or sometimes a combination of both. <laughs> so- one, of the, uh, one or the other. Same shit. Yeah, so it'd have a Rayleigh, it'd have Kid Goku, it would have a uh, Fat Boo in it for sure. It would have uh, Kid Trunks and then Kid Goten as well, but not any other form of them. So it had to be a very. It'd have to have Gotenks in it as well. I think Gotenks fits that key perfectly. Some forms of Super Boo. I think Super Boo before he absorbed uh, Ultimate Gohan. So not that form of them, and then also the the uh, Gotenks version of Super Boo, that one would fit. Because I feel like there's a good level of just dumbassness to Super Boo that is not really brought up. I think Super Boo is maybe the most, like, I don't understand what this character is supposed to be at any given point. <laughs> Uh, I think Kid Boo would also uh, the Kid Boo would also kind of fit there, if only because I think there is a that dance he does is real dumb. So I think that's why he fits. I can respect that. Yeah, but yeah, that's the the kind of category I would like. There was just I, there would be a, like a longer list if I looked through them, but I would have to look through them. Laxatives pan only that one though. This would finally give a reason to throw in laxative pan, which is the pan in GT that throws laxatives to try and cure people of baby. That is the only pan in the category. That is a very quality pan though. Yeah, it is a high quality pan. pan, and that was the pan. That was the kind of, they could add that as the sub leader. For fucking dumb. Uh, that would be a good category. Just stupid bullshit. Yeah, characters who established very stupid bullshit in this form. So, oh, so Candy Vegeta would be in there, obviously. He would be in there for a brief uh, moment. Yeah, I think it would be a real fun category. I think categories where it's like, you can't take that seriously are the best. Because once you start going into like, how come this character's not in it? I don't get it. That's when you've started to go like this category is worded too badly. It stops making any sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you feel, Zen? Who? What would you feel would be a good uh, category for a rally? I don't know, man. Um, I like the idea of a lot of different ones for her. Like, I want her to have a category that's category but it would be funny and it's just characters that she's fucking humiliated at some point (laughs) so general blue tau and vegeta (laughs) that would be a quality quality uh team like tell me that wouldn't be gold i would love it i would 100 percent love it you could also have superman in it because superman has been humiliated by a really um so yeah, you'd get the power team of Superman, General Tao, General Blue, Mercenary Tao, Mercenary Tao, and Vegeta in all forms. Yeah, that that would be great. Are you kidding? <laughs> That's gold. That's yeah. 
print it, and then I would love to show that off to Cornell specifically. So it would just be a bunch of Vegetas and then Aurelia as the headpiece. Yeah, and then every time she does a super attack, she launches one of your ally characters into the enemy. Oh, that'd be so good. So it would depend. It'd be like Gotenks where it's a different uh, a different ally getting thrown at them. Yeah, yeah. every time it's a different teammate getting launched at the enemy. Perfect. We've come... You know what, Dokkan? Just take these ideas for when the Aureli banner comes back. And by the all way... All yours, man. All, all yours. yours, Dokkan. I should also mention Aureli Watch will continue until the banner is here. The LR is perfectly amazing, but we need that banner to come back. <laughs> Waiting for <laughs> Make that. Make it ban- happen. Make it happen. Make it happen, Dokkan. Make it happen. Snap. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Um... This next question comes from Big Bun Ye. I think it's Big Bunny, whichever one, though, and with them with a little B. On your opinion, where would you place LR Kid Goku and Aureli with the list of LRs? Oh, this would be... This is, I think, showing our hand a little bit about where we would place the other LRs and the, the big boy yeah, scale. Yeah, I, I don't know if we can... I don't know if we can do rankings outside of the big boy scale. That's making it a little bit too... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we can Good, all... Though. Good, yeah, very very good placement. Um, if I think for someone, for based on just our uh, very uh, just by based on our talking about him, <laughs> the only one you can one hundred percent guess the placing of is Super Saiyan two Gohan all the way at the bottom because of his fucking bad animation. Yeah, he's like the resident whipping boy of LRs. Like no, everyone, no one fucking respects him anymore. No, there's. And to be fair, he still does insane damage. I think LR Broly might also be reaching that level because I feel I think that some people are realizing that the other Broly's are starting to out damage him a little bit, and the only thing he has is the fact that he can attack twice. Double AOE, right? Yeah. But then doesn't even. Oh, well, I guess the red one has that, but the red one's not as strong. Yeah, that's the thing is that the the red one has a I think a decently strong AOE now. And is easier to get and has a higher potential system and is easier to deal with SA-15 than it is 20. And then you have the other new Broly, which also does an AoE and does double attack, I think. Um, the, no, it doesn't do double attack. He just attacks twice. And But there's another one that also has an AoE. The, the thing is that the, what they don't do is that they just don't do it twice. Thanks. But let's see when physical Broly gets released. Gets his easy A. And then maybe he just might surpass the actual LR very possible yeah so we'll see again that's a larger discussion but know that they place good and that super saiyan 2 gohan's animation are all the way at the bottom (laughs) alongside broly for a similar reason (laughs) rip yeah rip everything about those guys 100 percent uh this next question comes from premised and it says where does baby rank now on the big boy scale since it really has found a leader that is way better this is a very good question I think this entire, if I had known that Kid Goku was coming, I would not have used all of my stones for him. (laughs) I could have saved them. Yeah, that does suck, doesn't it? Oh, Mm. man, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I would have saved all 400 stones that I used on that banner. Because those were the 400 stones that I saved up, literally because I skipped Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Vegeta. And was able to get it that high. Um... I think he kind of goes down to about a rank of one. <laughs> Around-ish yeah, now. Uh, he's, yeah, I can sign off on that. He's still in a Rayleigh lead, so that's why he's not in the negatives. But as of now, he's a one. <laughs> Just know that there is a better, a new and better leader out there for a Rayleigh that I wish I had pulled on. And uh, funny enough, the LR Dandan does not change. Stays the same. Still a very respectable category. Uh, I hate on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Sunshine, whose uh, full ad is Sunshine Night Fifteen. How do you, how did it feel when Dokkan gave you what you wanted with LR Goku and Aureli? Um Again, it felt like hope had returned to Dokkan, and I don't mean hope the friend. I mean actual hope. True hope. <laughs> True hope. Machine it, made it back to Dokkan after that. It really did show that just about anyone can be an LR unless you're Krillin. In which case... Yeah, poor Krillin. Yeah, poor... Sucks to suck, bro. 
Yeah. One day he'll get his due again when Master Roshi comes out and is technically a Master Roshi with a Kid Krillin in the name. <laughs> I would actually hope that that LR starts as a Kid Goku and a Kid Krillin. And then you get Roshi at the end. Because then... It should, be, it should be Kid Gohan, or Kid Goku and Kid Krillin in their non like little clothes. Yeah. Then one of and then the T U R is them and Roshi doing the training in the turtle shells with the milk jugs. And then the L R is them all in their turtle clothes. Yes. And also I would like the SA for the first form. You would never see it again, but I want it to be when uh Goku kept bringing women to Aureli and the, uh, not to Aureli to uh, Roshi, and you were like, it can became clear that Goku did not understand what a hot girl was or what a girl was. <laughs> so he would or bring when Krillin throws that rock that Goku supposedly will never find, and then he fucking finds it. Yes, and then he comes back, and then you like take side damage somehow. It will be like the launch essay where you sneeze, and then she sneezes, and then you take damage. It's one yeah, of those things like good. an action happens and then they take damage. Uh, thank you for the question. We have Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan asking, when do you think Int Goku Black is coming to global? Still beating the drum for Int <laughs> Goku Black. I respect it, man. The Keep, hustle never ends. The hustle never ends. I'm going to say it right now. Next week. Read Torco. <laughs> ne- yeah, read Torco, by the way. <laughs> Uh, it will come out next week. I'm calling it now. I'm calling my shots. Extremely bold, very bold, and I will continue asked a- answering next week every time you said the question <laughs> until I am right. <laughs> Eventually, it's gonna be next week. Yeah, watch out for my gifts of uh, Goku Black. That will let you know that Goku Black is coming. <laughs> watch out for my uh, uh, donut related <laughs> sprinkles. <laughs> yeah. My hints. It's time to make the donuts. Uh, next question comes in from Spider Oscars, and that's from LR our Kid and Nine. What do you think of the LR uh, Lid Goku and Aureli? They are pretty much the best free to play unit. I only wanted to pronounce this because he called it Lid Goku instead of Kid Goku, and I think it'd be it's- funnier if there was a new unit where it was instead of Kid Goku, it was a like a pot and pan <laughs> with the hair of Kid <laughs> Goku. <laughs> Um, I would say it's great. We answered this. Uh, go back 20 minutes and you'll find the answer. Thank you for the question. And thank hey, you, everyone. You know. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for realizing that uh, LR Kid Goku and Aureli would definitely be on today's episode because <laughs> they had a hey, good. You guys really figured it out. Yeah, you guys figured it out. Uh, next person, I'm just going to. This is a very easy and quick question. It's from. Is Zazus Nino who asks, "Would you like to see an Extreme Z Awakening for the Aureli cards?" The answer is yes, one hundred percent. Pretty much so. <laughs> I would, if there was a way to give her a new leader skill that was maybe the the kids and kids and girls, no boys and girls, that would be kids fine. And girls, yeah, kids <laughs> and girls, or give her a one hundred percent to HP attack and defense and three key plus three, just to make her like Gogeta but thirty percent better. Like she was one she released. Be pretty funny. Yep. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Next question comes from what if Dio was Chibi? Question mark. And the Dio is in all caps. So they're talking about part three part Dio. Part three Dio. Yeah. Of course. Uh and he asked the very important question of can I climb on board? Does the Nimbus wait? Will the fantastic journey from my dreams have a thrilling mystery? Uh, everyone who Better. watches Yeah. I feel like everyone who watches this episode is in our uh, mystic adventure already. You're here. And you're you're along with us. Yeah. So come aboard and find them dragon balls. The seven mystic balls. <laughs> come and find them all. Find the dragon balls. Gotta find. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun. I'm gonna play it right now <laughs> for the entire. <laughs> if possible, every time we talk about it, I'm just gonna play the dragon balls. Thank you for the question. Hope that answers it. Uh, next uh, next question comes from Vieta DMC Five Hype. What do you think Dokkan? What do you think Dokkan will do for the one thousand five hundred day reward? One thousand five hundred stones. Just give it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anyone. 
This is a secret between us. Uh, other than that, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> like, I don't. I think that they're not going to do anything. No, I think you'll get stones. One thousand five hundred days. But for five hundred days, did they do anything? Yeah, they did. Oh. I think that's right. I, I mean, for lo- I, I think he means in terms of not just login. But just it's been that long since the game came out. Mm-hmm. One thousand five hundred days since the game came out. What the fuck are we doing? I know it's been a long time. It's been a long road. It's never ending. The answer is we, we really don't know. Dragon Ball. We gotta find them Dragon Ball. The answer is that they're gonna find the ball, the seven mystic balls. <laughs> Again, the song plays. <laughs> uh, That's all that happens. You turn the game on and the song plays. Oh yeah, it would be like that ad, except for it's like a like two minutes long of them showing you the the old ocean dub. Even the Japanese version will play it. So but all the Japanese players will go like, what? <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Dark Blastoise. And he asks, do you think they'll bring back the Aurelia units in a future celebration or just put them in on every banner? It seems like it was the perfect time to do so, but I guess not. And then a white person with their hands up in the air going like, I don't know. Um... I mean, the actual good thing to do was to put a Rayleigh on every single banner. So, like, similar to what they did for Hero Fusions, specifically, because Heroes is still limited. Um, I think the only reason they haven't done it yet is because maybe they plan to do with, like, Heroes to do a banner that will have more Dr. Slump units in it. But then I would really hope that banner shows up more than once every two years. So I don't know. If they're gonna sell, if they're gonna save it for something, they're gonna save it for a Doctor Slump anniversary. That's my only thing. I think that's the that makes the most sense to release it. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the question, Dark Blastoise. And the final question comes in from Zaid and asks, "Which of the Aureli batch cards is your favorite?" Uh, let's see. Well, you have Physical Aureli, who is the strongest of the Aureli. It has the strongest Nicha cannon. You have Kitty Aureli, who is Aureli but in a kitty suit and has a better Ren animation than LR Gohan. Um, you have Break the World Aureli, which is STR, and she breaks the world and again has a better Ren animation than LR Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. You have Tech Aureli, who is just in Goku's clothes and does the Kamehameha, so already that's pretty cool. And then you do, then you have Int Aureli, that uh, is literally poking at shit and throws shit at the enemy. And then you have the new LR Rayleigh, who is with Kid Goku, and as we mentioned before, is a pretty big boy. Uh, so the answer is a tied for first place in every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel, Zen? Uh, I like the uh, I like the Kid Goku outfit one. It is a very nice outfit. I like that uh, Kid Goku also has the the Rayleigh version. Where she, where he's in Aureli's clothes, just because he looks like a big, a big goof. <laughs> he looks like a, yeah, a big idiot. Yeah, just like all smiles, and then he's also doing the "I want to wrestle you" attack. So he's just like slamming his bodies into people. It's great. All right, and that finally we are done with everything to do with to be released. That's, uh, I mean, for this episode, not, this wasn't my side of like, okay, we're done. Back up. No more episodes. Oh boy. All right, then why don't you say goodbye as we say goodbye to the people. Hi everybody. Thanks for watching to be released and sticking with us through somehow 1500 days of Dokkan. Did, is this why you've been quiet? Because you've been slowly contemplating the fact that we've been doing this for yeah, close to... It's been, it's been slowly hitting me that Dokkan has been out for 1,500 days. Both mm. of my dogs. Wow. And we still have not found the seven mystic balls. Those magic oh. dragon balls. <laughs> da, da. Da, da. Perfect dead transition <laughs> as a song plays. 